Hi, everybody. I'm Cleary Von Lee, the executive director for the Global Oneness Project. Um, I'm such, such a pleasure to join everybody today. I look forward to starting in about one minute. We're a little bit early. Um, and I'll be sharing information about the Global Oneness Project, as well as how we use environmental storytelling to, um, for use in the classroom and ways in which um, tips and strategies, classroom stories, as well as how teachers and students are using environmental stories um, in the classroom. So I'm going to go ahead and start. So thank you for joining me. I'm Cleary Von Lee, uh, the Executive Director of the Global Oneness Project. I hope this finds all of you well. I'm joining you here from Northern California in the United States. Um, and I, I want to also thank 100. Global Oneness Project was selected as the 2017 um, Global Innovation, Education Innovation. And we're really excited to uh, be joining this webinar. So for the next 15 to 20 minutes, I'm going to share a little bit of a backstory um, about the Global Oneness Project, what we do. I'll also include some environmental stories, um, which will dive into climate change which will kind of span everything from climate change um, to sustainability. Um, and I'll talk a little bit also about environmental literacy and practice, as well as some very specific student projects. First, let me share. Um, also, I we'll also want to say, please do use the chat. I'd love to hear from everybody who's joining. Um, maybe where you're from, um, what you are doing in the classroom with environmental storytelling or sustainability and environmental literacy. So please join the chat and I'd love to, um, to, to hear your voices too. Um, so first I'll share a little bit about the Global Oneness Project. We are a multimedia education platform that started in 2006. Uh, as storytellers, we're really committed to the exploration of global cultures. So the intention behind um, the Global Oneness Project is really twofold, to house a rich library of multimedia stories, which highlight cultural, social, and environmental issues, and to offer environmental, um, well, sorry, to offer companion curriculum to teachers. And all of this is for free. So you can come to our website, you can start browsing and viewing the stories, and you can start using the companion curriculum um, all for free. So through our stories, which are basically short documentary films and photo essays, um, we connect students to local human um, experiences to global issues such as climate change, uh, water scarcity, food insecurity, endangered cultures, migration and sustainability, just to name a few. And through featuring these individuals and communities impacted by these particular issues, the stories include universal themes, which basically highlight our common humanity, such as identity and diversity and resilience and empathy and responsibility. Um, so you can come to our site, like I said, you can start viewing the stories, the films, the, and the photo essays. You can also create your own collection, which means that if you like a story on our site, um, or you like a lesson plan, you can create your own collection and you can publish that to share with your students, or if you want to share them with your colleagues, you can do that as well. Um, we also have Google Classroom, um, uh, but the button on our site. So if you are a teacher that uses Google Classroom, that is accessible as well. Um, and we also just um, completed and published an app. So if you are a teacher that uses um, apps in your classroom, we are available on iTunes, Amazon, and on Roku. So if you're just joining me, I'm Cleary Von Lee of the Global Oneness Project. 
And I'm sharing a little bit about the Global Oneness Project, as well as ways in which our organization uses environmental storytelling and how that really, um, how you can use those environmental stories in the classroom to teach environmental literacy, as well as ways in which you can use um, stories to talk and teach about sustainability. So please do make sure you type and use the chat box if you're, if you're live here with me. Um, do you have any specific tips for environmental literacy? I'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas too. So how can we prepare students to become perceptive and engaging global citizens? This is a question that we explore frequently with teachers and students and stories, and in this case, global environmental stories, they can provide engaging and creative ways to connect to the world around them, but also to themselves. And I'm gonna share a little bit about that by talking about a few of those specific stories. And one story that I really like to share when I start talking about the Global Oneness Project is talking about one of the very first films that we um, documented and made, and that was in 2008, and it was called A Thousand Sons. This particular film was set in Ethiopia, Kenya, and in New York City, and it tells the story of the Gamo Highlands of the Africa, African Rift Valley, and the very unique um, worldview held by the people of that region. It's a very isolated area, and it's, it's remained remarkably intact, both biologically and culturally. They've been farming sustainably for 10,000 years. And the film explores the, the modern world's sense of separation um, from nature and how um, the internet, interconnected worldview of the Gamo people is fundamental in achieve, achieving long-term sustainability, both in that region and beyond. And the reason I like to share this particular story when I talk about environmental uh, storytelling is that if you come to the film, it's 25 minutes long, the opening uh, sequence of this film is, is seeing these indigenous men and they've come to New York City for the very first time and they're standing on top of the, the skyline of New York City on top of the high sky rise and they're overlooking this, this massive um, concrete buildings and structures and they look at each other and they say, where's the land? And I'd like to tell that story because what we do at the Global Oneness Project, a lot of the stories that we document are indigenous cultures and people on the edges of change all around the world and kind of valuing their perspective and knowledge of their relationship to the land, but also looking at our modern world and how our modern world has impacted um, their lives in particular ways. And we start to see, um, sustainability issues and environmental issues through their eyes. And I think um, we have a lot to learn from them. And students um, can make specific connections through their stories. So for example, through the companion curriculum to that story, um, we called it Ancient and Modern Worlds. And in that particular um, lesson plan, um, there's a mini debate which basically is centered on the question, does the modern world negatively or positively influence the traditional gamma culture? So this kind of opens the debate to, to focus on biodiversity, healthy ecosystems, food systems. There's a lot of different connections that could be made. So um, how can you find stories on our site which explore these environmental stories? There's a couple of ways. One is that you can come to our site. We've actually created collections. We've curated specific collections. So you can come and you can see that we've created a specific collection on climate change, one also on nature and also one on endangered cultures. Um, and so um, one of those stories uh, documenting, for example, climate change is a short story called Yukon Kings, a short film, 
which is set in the remote Alaskan Yukon Delta, which follows a Yupik fisherman who teaches his grandkids, grandkids how to fish during the salmon, summer salmon run. And so what this story is kind of depicting is that with environmental and cultural forces at work, their particular subsistence way of life is basically um, in danger. And another um, story is a story called Melting Away, which is a photo essay uh, by Camille Seaman. And she captures icebergs from Antarctica and, and the Arctic. And um, her particular photo essay, she's an indigenous woman and um, the reason why I like this story so much is that her particular point of view is so um, connected to the land. And so she views icebergs as almost like ancestors. And so she, as you come to our site and you look at her photo essay called Melting Away and you read her photographer statement, which is basically a description about um, how she came to photograph the icebergs, you'll see that she she views land and she views the environment with a very particular lens on how, um, how we're connected as humans to our environment, obviously. Um, and then one more story um, that takes a global lens is a photo essay called Kara Women Speak, which documents the, the Kara tribe living in the Omo River Valley, which is located in uh, the southwestern Ethiopia. And this particular photo essay is by photographer Jane Baldwin. And over the past decade, she has been uh, visiting the region and documenting the Kara people's point of view. And they have been living harmoniously uh, with the land and with the ecosystem. However, um, in, past, in the past few years, there has been a construction of uh, the Gibe 3 hydroelectric dam, which is basically um, threatening their way of life. And they are, um, this, this story has actually rapidly changed over the last year or two, but there, um, many of them have been living on the river. So their subsistence way of life is at risk and they're also at risk of displacement. So, um, that particular story kind of provides an entry point. So teachers come to our site and they look at these particular stories and these particular stories can provide entry points to um, sustainability issues and environmental literacy issues in a variety of ways. So for example, a um, high school science teacher used this Kara Women Speak photo essay to provide a foundation for healthy uh, watersheds and healthy rivers. And he used it to provide a global example for his students before he ended up teaching the local uh, perspective. So that provided a way for them to learn about the impacts of hydroelectric dams before he ended up teaching them about their local rivers and their local watersheds. And because he was a science teacher, he was able to um, go out into his local waters to be able to conduct um, water quality um, experiments and such. Um, and so uh, another, well, I'll just share another example that is part of that Care Women Speak um, lesson plan and I bring this up too because when we're talking about environmental literacy and that you can um, bring in STEAM which is um, science technology environmental uh, environment art and math so bringing in the art piece which is a very impactful way to bring um, bridging science and art together um, and so in this particular uh, lesson plan, there is a question, uh, which is a reflecting writing piece. I should add that all of our uh, lesson plans have classroom discussion questions in them, which are in intended to promote dialogue and collaboration. And there's also reflective writing prompts. So in this particular um, lesson plan for care of women, there's a reflective writing prompt which 
talks about um, watersheds. And um, one question that just came in is, which curriculum um, is your videos and literacy plans online? Can anyone outside of the USA use them? Yes, um, all of our lesson plans and, and um, films and photo essays are available um, outside of the USA. Um, and, you know, one of the things that we are focusing on is providing um, contexts for, for us to not to be so U.S. centric. Um, you know, I should add that all of our stories are, many of them are global. So if you come to our um, site and you look at our lesson plans, we do have very specific research that are, that's connected to that particular issue with facts and statistics. So you're able to um, come from wherever you are around the world to um, have a particular entry point into that particular story. Um, to, you know, and it also depends on what you're teaching, what grade level you're teaching, and how you might use those in your classroom. So it really depends on a particular entry point that you might be looking for. Um, and I was going to share before that going back to care women that there's we're linking so one particular um, question which is a reflective writing prompt says if you had to write a river or a watershed story based on where you live what story would you tell and does your story illustrate a positive or negative outlook so that's one um, example and so i'll just talk a little bit about um, I'm just going to wrap up in about five minutes. So whether you're looking for an interdisciplinary approach to sustainability, um, whether you're looking for how to bring in climate change, or if you're a teacher that uses the sustainable, sustainable development goals or the SDGs in your classroom, you will find a lot of um, sources and stories that you can connect to that. So whether you're looking at those 17 topics that were um, established by the United Nations, whether you're looking at ranging from poverty and health and water, you can find a story that connects to that too. Um, for example, I'll just share a very quick example that one of our local partners, the California International Studies Project, hi to, hi to Emily and team out there, um, one of their fifth grade teachers used one of our photo essays that documented the Flint water crisis, which is here in Michigan, but it documents Michigan and the United States. It documents the issue of clean water and what, um, through the specific lens of individuals living there and the health that is threatened when people don't have access to clean water. And that gave a very particular um, entry point to fifth graders who are, um, you know, nine and 10 years old. So um, environmental storytelling, storytelling can really provide um, ways to, for students to dive into real world problem solving. Um, they can also provide ways for students to, to engage in activism, if that's something that your students are doing. Um, there are very specific and power of observation. So, and obviously it wouldn't be environmental education if your students aren't also getting outside. So it's, it's making that bridge. Um, and also, you know, through our work, we really um, like to um, ask questions, which is kind of going to the point that I shared in the beginning about what are the values that that humans have and how can we um, how can we hold that accountable um, both globally but also locally so for example i'm going to end with one story that i like um, that is uh, with student work and that is i worked with um, some high school students and gave them a very particular prompt um, an environmental prompt, which is, 
three questions. Those three questions were, what responsibility does your generation have to the earth? What would your generation like to say to the earth? And what would the earth say to your generation? And what they did is they ended up creating photo essays, documenting through particular, obviously visuals, because it was a photo essay, and through the captions, answering this question. And what they did was they went out into their local environment, they captured themselves in the forest and in their local school environment. And this got them thinking about, it empowered them basically to, to create, to be creative, to speak, to um, highlight their voice, to collaborate, this was a group project, and to share and publish their ideas. And one of the captions from this particular, particular photo essay was, the boughs of the tree bow not in deference to us, but to nature. And I thought that really powerful because that, that they were able to make connections um, to their generation. And we talked a lot about the disconnection between, you know, digital and being on the digital world, but also, also being planted in the, the physical world and, and having a particular connection to nature and what that means. So um, stay tuned, please join us. You can find more information about the Global Oneness Project on 100's website. We have a lot of information there which documents the project itself, how you can implement the project in your classroom. And you can also find us at globalonenessproject.org. We have some um, great projects coming up. One um, film called Earthrise, which was just premiered this week in New York City at Tribeca Film Festival. And um, that film will have its online premiere on the New York Times in July. And it basically documents the Earthrise photograph, which is the first um, the photograph that was taken on the first on Apollo 8, the first lunar orbit and um, in 1968. And that film kind of takes a planetary lens of the environment. And so we'll be exploring in a companion curriculum guide, um, different questions that point to kind of bearing witness and reverence for the environment and how students can really engage in specific discussions around that. You can also go to, to 100 org. There was, they just published a an article about Earthrise, and, and it kind of gives you a little sneak peek about the forthcoming companion curriculum. So please do check that out too. Um, and again, um, it's been a pleasure joining you, and thanks to 100 for the invitation. And um, Please do be in touch. I, I always love hearing from teachers how you and your students are using storytelling, and in this case, environmental storytelling in your classroom. Um, and I'd love to continue the conversation. So I'd love to hear from you. And thank you so much. I hope you enjoy your day. And if you're in other parts of the world, um, enjoy your evening. Thank you so much.